Hey, bee buddies. Today I am bringing all the glitter and all the gold. We're gonna be opening up the El Dorado mystery kit from Silver Silk and more. And I'm gonna show you how to fasten a fast, fabulous, and furious necklace that is gonna be so easy to put together. And really this kit gives you the availability to do a lot of things, but with this particular technique that I'm gonna be teaching you, you can really use any beads and chain that you want to. Um, I think the design is very classic and you know to do it with silver silk I think just adds another layer of extra deliciousness to this whole thing. More glitter and more gold, right? <laughs> if you're looking for what materials I'm using for this video, you can check out the video description and it'll give you a link to all the different parts and pieces that I use. Uh, and if you're looking for the kit, it's got a link to that as well. And I want to welcome you to my channel. My name is Neelay Patel. I'm the owner, designer, and educator here at Silver Silk and More. And my job is to bring you guys fun and fantastic tutorials and let you know all about the great product that Silver Silk is. Before we get started with this tutorial, I want you to do a couple different things. First of all, give this video on YouTube a big thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to the channel. And if you're wanting to have even more inspiration in your life, then you want to uh, check out and follow my Instagram. So without further delay, let's go ahead and just dive right into this tutorial because I can't wait to get started. All righty, here is the El Dorado mystery kit. That is not so much a mystery anymore, right? <laughs> I'm unveiling all of it to you. It's got quite a bit of stuff in here, so let me just dump some of this stuff out, and then um, I'll get into the tools that I'm gonna be using for this project. And so this is the artwork, and this gives you sort of the color story that I chose to curate the items and make the silver silk for it. Um, lots of golds and greens, which the greens are just my favorite colors, but I thought um, using the gold with it was just gonna be a fabulous accent color. But you get two different chains. You get fern and you get solid gold. Um, of course, the El, El Dorado kit was gonna have gold in it somewhere, right? Um, and we're gonna be using actually the fern chain for our design. But if you're looking for more gold on top of gold, then you can absolutely just use a solid gold capture chain. This chain is pretty special. It uses six needles to make a beaded sleeve, a beaded sleeve, a knitted sleeve over a beaded chain. Um, or otherwise known as a ball chain. And it's very supple, very soft, drawn down to perfection, and um, just really great to wear. And again, this is going to be the perfect design, especially if you're new to Silver Silk. Uh, this is going to be your, your gateway <laughs> into this fantastic world of Silver Silk. Uh, the, this fern, specifically, um, because I carry different colors, is a green, sort of a lighter green colored knitted wire that's on top of gunmetal ball chain. So you get this sort of dark green, well, it's not really dark green, I suppose. It's got a dark core to a lighter green color. It's just a really unique color. Um, and then of course the solid gold has a gold plated ball chain inside of it. So you're getting a lot of gold there. Okay, um, I threw in a couple of charms. These are some green fans that I thought were really cool um, to go with this mix. And then I have a pair of single strand end caps that are also included in this kit. And we'll be using these for this, uh, this tutorial today. So have those on hand. And then you get a pretty robust bead mix along with this really great foil pendant. And I'll actually be doing a second live video on my Facebook page um, for the Silver Silk and More um, Facebook page. And I'm gonna be showing you a different design. So right after this video, you'll probably wanna pop on there for my, what I like to call the roundup. Um, so make sure to mark that right on your calendar right after this show. All right, for this bead mix, comes with a lot of glittery, sparkly goodness. Um, you get these really fun sequins beads that are just gigantic <laughs> and a lot of fun, I think. And then you get some really great sparkly, smaller beads. There's these great links that are very intricate and detailed, really 
goes with that El Dorado theme, which I think is really fun. And then there's just a, a hodgepodge of crystals and other sort of accent color beads. Of course, there's some gold pearls in there. You got a couple tassels, some bead caps. And then um, I thought I'd throw in a bale in case you're wanting to do a different design uh, for this particular kit. So you get that in there too. And there's just some other little check glass pieces and some uh, two hole connectors here, which are really cool. And so that concludes that mix. And then as for tools, Okay, I've got a few different tools here that I'm using. I've got a pair of Lindstrom cutters. These are my favorite cutters to use for um, cutting beading wire, cutting silver silk, cutting craft wire, cutting thread on occasion. So really it's, um, it's just easy to use and very sharp and perfect to have. Okay. Sorry guys, just give me a second here to warm up. Um, as we're continuing here, I'm having some difficulties with my computer today. <laughs> but that's okay, we're gonna keep rolling here. Um, I have a pair of nylon jaw pliers. These are great for straightening out craft wire, which is what I'm gonna be using today. And um, I prefer my Wubbers to um, any other tool company out there. They're just really great, robust tools. I've also got a pair of flat nose pliers. This is perfect for um, crimping my findings, especially the silver silk ones, because they are very shiny and I get a really good grip on with uh, these particular flat nose pliers. They have that rubber rubberized coating because of tool magic. And Tool Magic makes it super easy uh, to grip or, um, you know, just like, I guess, grasp on to my finding without any sort of cause of abrasion or um, ruining my finding there. And then I've got a pair of round nose pliers. These are perfect for um, making simple loops. And they're, of course, beautifully tapered. They have um, a narrower tip on the inside. And I think this is where Weber's for me is my best uh, choice in it because I get to um, have some really smaller loops and then some really wider loops there too. And um, really prefer these to any other pliers for my round nose making um, or for my, excuse me, my simple loop making. And then I've got a pair of chain nose pliers also from Weber's. This is perfect for um, just grasping onto any head pins, any simple loops, you name it. I've used them for quite a bit of things and they are perfect for, um, for that reason. So having gone through all of that, let me show you the design that we're gonna make. This is Basically the lariat that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna replicate this exact design strand and make another replica on this raw end. Give me one second here, guys, sorry. I'm hoping I can pop myself back onto my TV here once my computer starts to work again. Okay, anyway. I've got this raw end. And so what we're gonna do is actually replicate our entire design um, throughout this stringing. And I'm just using wire to do this, believe it or not, and making a series of simple loops and some really clever little wire wrapped um, beads here, which for these crystals and for the pearls, when you're just wanting to add a little bit of zing to it, I think the wire wrapping is perfect. All right, so to do this, you'll just need a few items and I've got my handy little bead tray here. I've got my single strand end cap and then I've just got my series of beads that I've used. I've used my glittery bead here toward the bottom. I've got my lovely little link there. I've got 
my crystal there that's ready to wrap. And then I've got my glitter bead. And you could really fashion this in any sort of way that you want to. There's no right or wrong answer to this design process or um, you know, any arrangement of beads that you want. You can really arrange it to however you like and have it, I think, beautiful either way. You could even make this completely asymmetrical and use different beads on different strands here. And I think that would make a really fun mix. So I think I can get my computer set up here real quick so I can make sure that everything is running smooth on the other end. And I, again, I do apologize for the craziness that's behind the scenes here. <laughs> Sometimes that happens. Let's see. You'll get to see my face pop on here any second now, hopefully. Uh, there we go. <laughs> Sorry about that, you guys. I am back on now, and it's all good. All right. So let's go over how to crimp with these findings, because they have a very special channel on the inside, and this is specifically used as a single strand end cap, meaning there's only single or one strand that can go through here. Whenever I grab the end of my chain, sometimes I've got some little funky things happening with the knitted wire that needs to be either trimmed or cleaned up. No problem, right? So what we can do is trim this off with our handy Lindstrom cutters. There we go. And sometimes you get these little like wire remnants here at the end that sort of just hang out there and don't really help anything. <laughs> so I call these little wire fuzzies and I just like to pluck them off. And just sort of clean up the end there. And uh, these little wire remnant pieces tend to get into the way of um, crimping. So you definitely want to make sure that you do trim those. Now my wire looks like it shrank, or my ball chain did, so I'm going to trim it off even more. And uh, it gives me another opportunity to pluck these guys again for you. You see how many just, like, probably four or five pluck right out. And again, you don't want these to be on the ends of your knitted wire chain. Okay, that looks really good. So then you can kind of just roll and pinch, pinch and roll in your fingers, and then just insert it into the bead cap there, the end cap. And then you can actually just take your wide nose pliers and just press down. You can be pretty firm with this because again, that tool magic is going to really protect that coating on your finding. So there you go. Sometimes you have a little piece of wire that's stuck at the end. or a little sticky outie there, but you can definitely just trim that right off. All right, and now you're pretty much ready to go. So you can start to connect all of your pieces together now, very easy. So at this point, I'm going to start to make uh, simple loops that connect together. So I'm going to take some craft wire. Now specifically, this product is Softflex gold plated, gold silver plated, excuse me, um, craft wire in 20 gauge. Uh, regardless of the feet, because you might want to get more than 25 feet, make sure you're paying attention to the gauge. I really like using soft flex craft wire. It's super flexible and very forgiving on your fingers if you're wanting to do some really robust work, which 20 gauge wire, it's pretty thick. So you do want to protect your fingers and, um, you know, just make make beading easy and friendly and fun. So I highly recommend going with that brand with the 20 gauge wire. Now I'm just going to start with my simple loops. To do this, I just take the tip of my wire and gently start to wrap it around the nose of my pliers. You can pick a spot on your pliers that's going to give you the perfect loop. You can even mark it with a Sharpie or some nail polish or something that'll mark it a little bit more semi-permanently. This will give you consistent loops each and every time. I prefer to stay on the upper quadrant of my pliers, of my the tip of my pliers. 
So this is really probably a third of the way in. And this gives me pretty consistent smaller um, size loops there, as you can see. Once I've done this, you can see that I've got sort of this P shape if I turned it around this way, meaning that the loop is sort of faced over on one side. The idea is to get it nice and central. So what I'm going to do is actually flip it all the way around so it's backwards now. I'm going to grasp where the neck is. The neck is just where the tip of my wire meets the stem of my wire. And I'm going to do what I call break the neck, which means you just turn it back so that the loop becomes central. You don't want to go too much, not overboard. You don't want to break that neck too hard, <laughs> just a little bit. Just give it a little bit of chiropractic care and you'll see that that loop is nice and symmetrical and ready to be beaded. All right, and it does stick out just a little bit more, so I'm just gonna flatten it down like that. And then you can grab your first bead, which happens to be this very sparkly bead. Go ahead and string that right on. And on the other side, what I do is I trim about a half inch, and this gives me just enough wire to start forming my loops. So I can take my cutters, trim oh, about that much. Again, this is equivalent to maybe about a half inch. And then you can always trim away, but you can never add on. So just give yourself plenty of wire to work with. All right, go back into where your last loop was made into the nose of your pliers and then just start to form your loop. It looks like I was just spot on, which is perfect. Um, and then go back in and break that neck. If it feels out of alignment, you can definitely take your chain nose pliers and then just start to tweak. It looks like I've had my loops facing perpendicular, which means I've got one loop that faces toward me and one loop that faces against me. Against me? With me? <laughs> it's face to face with me. And then the other one's sort of turned away. And this is what I'll need for my chain here. And I'm going to follow that same consistent uh, format for the rest of them, including the ones that are wire wrapped, which brings me to my next bead. So this one, we're gonna do a wire wrapped loop. So we're gonna take our simple loop and add on a little extra to it. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with eight inches of 20 gauge wire. I went ahead and pre-cut two of them because I'll need them for my crystal and my pearl down here. So I'm going to go about a couple inches in, again, just in the same spot where you made your last loop. And I'm going to just turn that tail around the top part of my plier and meet it, again, perpendicularly to my stem. Once I've done that, I can go back and I'm gonna use my chain nose pliers this time to break the neck just a little bit. So you can see that now I'm at a 45 degree angle instead of 90 as I was before. Once I've done that, I can reinsert it back into my pliers and complete that 90 degree bend right back. What this does is it just moved my loop ever so slightly to the middle where it was off center before. Once I've gotten it to that middle standpoint there, I'm gonna grasp the entire loop with my chain nose pliers. This might require going down quite a bit into your chain nose pliers, but trust me, it'll hold the shape of your simple loop um, or to be wire wrap loop. And you'll definitely be thankful for going down into the larger part of your wire. I'm gonna grab another pair of pliers, in this case, my round nose to help assist me. And I'm going to just wire wrap that stem. I'm gonna do this a couple times, making sure that my coils are nice and precise as they are right there. You can remove your chain nose pliers and cut off at an angle that little tail wire. I prefer to do it at an angle. As you can see, it's a nice sharp angle there. And then that makes it easy to fold right back into that coil. So this just becomes a part of your stem. Okay, and then you can always straighten your wire back out and you've got a nice little wire wrap loop. So I'm going to insert my crystal right in and I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. 
but I'm not going to cut off any extra wire once I've done my coiling. So let's get to it. I'm going to insert my pliers. That's gonna be the step, first step to this. This is gonna be the distance that I'll be coiling. So I wanna be pretty close to the tip there. And I'm going to just bend straight down, okay? There we go, you should have this nice 90 degree angle bend. Once I've done that, I'm going to insert my round nose pliers in. I'm gonna work it halfway around. If I go any more, I'm going to distort the shape of my wire, so I just bent it toward me. I'm going to switch sides of my pliers because it's easier for me to handle. And I'm going to then finish out my loop because nothing's gonna get in the way. Okay, once I've sort of adjusted and made sure that there's no gaps, you could see because I bent my wire earlier that I've already got a nice broken neck, if you will. <laughs> and uh, my loop is nice and symmetrical. So at this point, I can grasp it into my chain nose pliers, and I'm going to coil it a few times to get that bead settled and nice and um, snug in there between those coils. Now here's the magical part. Here's where you really wanna have some nice straight wire ahead of you because you wanna grab the tip of your wire and you wanna just gently fold it and let it coil around that bead naturally. And if the coil distorts, it's okay. It just adds a little extra character to your bead. And then you can start to coil right into your wire wrap loop from earlier. You could see because I let it do whatever it wanted, it just made it nice and very, very flowy. You can't see that there's any sort of um, bend or marring or warping of that wire. It's just nice and smooth. So really the trick is just to let the wire do its thing and then come back in and coil it over what you've already made earlier. You can then trim off the extra wire. And as before, you just fold in that extra little tail and boom, you have got yourself a sweet little wire wrapped bead that took very little effort. And at this point, you can start to connect your chain together or at least the top part. So what I'm gonna do is open up my simple loop as you would a jump ring, you open it toward you. Stick that bead in and close it. And then same thing on this end, I'm going to attach this directly to my silver silk finding. There we go. And then I'm going to assemble my little link here and it looks like I used some jump rings which I've got here at the side. There are no jump rings in the kit so you'll want to have some six millimeter jump rings on hand. This is probably close to 20 gauge wire as well, maybe 18 gauge, but either one works perfectly. Okay, I'm gonna attach uh, a jump ring to both ends of my link there. And that is also ready to go now, so that's perfect. I went ahead and made a simple loop um, on both ends of my glitter bead here, my sequin bead. And I'm just gonna open these up as you would a simple loop or jump ring from earlier, and then go ahead and work that back in. And then looks like I'm ready to wire wrap another bead. So this one is gonna be the pearl. Okay, so we are gonna grab our other eight inch strand or uh, eight inch length of craft wire. And we're gonna basically repeat the same process from earlier. So if you guys are just now tuning in, there's a couple different ways to do this. You can either break your neck ahead of time or you can break it later. In this way, or this, this time, I guess I'm going to break it earlier and see if I get the same result, which I'm pretty sure I should. I'm gonna bend that wire around, then switch sides, and then complete my loop there. So I think 
bending that wire earlier does save a step in the process. Something to think about, especially if you're making a bunch of these. <laughs> Definitely uh, cutting a few corners here and there, I think is a great thing. Okay, I'm going to wrap my shorter wire around the stem about three times. Perfect. And then just trim that little piece off. Okay, and then tuck in that little part that we just cut. Boom, perfection. Okay, at this point I can take my pearl, string it right on. Again, same process from earlier. I'm just gonna grab the end or the uh, beginning of my wire there that's just above the pearl with my chain nose pliers. Go ahead and bend it down. You'll get a 90 degree angle with a short gap. That gap is going to be filled in with our coiling. So don't worry about it being there. Okay, grasp it into your pliers. And because the pearl surface is a little bit uh, different from the crystal of what we were using earlier, it's round and it, it can be kind of hard to get into. You can even grasp just a little bit out from where your bend is, and then just sort of gently fold it in just a little bit to get yourself started. And once you've done that, you can start to complete your loop. Again, I'm going to bend it, that wire toward me, switch sides on my plier, and finish out that loop. And you should get something that looks like this. Once you've done that, you can grasp the head of your wire wrap loop with your chain nose pliers and then just start to coil. You'll get about three coils in and at this point you're ready to do the magic. This will be the part where you straighten out the wire and just let it fold over that bead ever so gently. When you get toward the end here, oh, that's really pretty. Look how many times I got on there. Isn't that cool? Once you get toward the end here, you can start to kind of make a very small loop. If you need the assistance of your thumb nose pliers, you can absolutely grab those and just sort of help you coil that in if you need to. Okay, so let's see. I'm trying to be very gentle with this because I don't want to mess up my loops there. Whoops. And of course, I inevitably did. <laughs> That's all right. But I definitely want to get this coiled to perfection. So I'm just going to tighten the top part here with my chain those pliers, and then hopefully it should just fall right into place, which it looks like it is. That's okay. Our, uh, our pearl is just going to have some extra character, which, you know me, I have a little bit of drama in my design. So once I've done that, I can uh, just pinch and tuck in. Looks like I've still got a little bit sticking out there, so we'll do that. But, oh, that's really pretty. I actually do like this little curve that's happening. It gives it a very unique, fun feel to it. So, and again, I want my loops to sort of face opposite of each other um, as they are there. And then I'm ready to start connecting. And looks like I'll be pretty much done with my design because this design doesn't require a clasp, which I love a good no necklace clasp. No necklace, no clasp necklace. <laughs> Sorry. It's hard for me to sometimes do stuff and talk at the same time. And I'm also partly excited for completing this design. So there we go. Yeah, so no clasp necklace, all finished. So what you can do to wear this is stagger them just a little bit and then gently 
put a little slip knot into your capture chain just like this. And then you can simply just throw it right over your neck and be good to go. Very easy to do, very fun, and you get this really great glittery necklace design. Right. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, we had a few hiccups, but we just moved right along and we got you some instructions and some really great tips and techniques here for completing this design. It is a great beginner level project, I think, um, and just an easy, again, just an easy gateway into working with silver silk and using um, some of the fun chains and beads and stuff in a design that's very easy to make. So, if you enjoyed this video, please give this video a big thumbs up and um, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel while you're on YouTube. And if you're looking for even more inspiration, you can check out my Instagram. And I've got a ton of great, great inspirational photos on there and some reels from some behind the process stuff to demos and tutorials. So it's a really great place to pick up some fun ideas and techniques there as well. So until next time, I hope you guys stay creative excitable, fun, just have fun with crafting, have fun with jewelry making, don't take it too seriously, and just enjoy making designs that you will wear time and time again, and uh, I will keep up with creating designs that you guys can do very easily as well. All right, I love all of you, and see you again soon.